John chapter number 19, the gospel of John chapter number 19. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. We're going to read the account of how God proved that he loved you and I. John chapter 19, verse number 1, the Bible says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers platted a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Now look with me on down, uh, uh, verse number uh, 16. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, uh, uh, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the written, writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I've written, I've written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments, made four parts to every soldier part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. And they said, Therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Uh, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, uh, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Uh, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop uh, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, uh, and he bowed his head, uh, and he gave up the ghost. Let's pray. Father, we sure do thank you that, Lord, you loved us so much. We thank you, Lord, that uh, reading the account of the crucifixion never gets old. Lord, uh, reading what you've done on the cross for sinners such as I. And God, we're so grateful that we can come to your house this morning and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, for the good youth choir singing. Thank you for the good congregational singing. Thank you for the good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for the good report of the two jail services this morning. Thank you for being a good God. Uh, now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you would continue to bless and move in our service. Uh, I pray the sweet Holy Spirit would not be grieved or quenched. Uh, I pray folks wouldn't hold back, but they'd put their whole heart into worshiping you. Uh, and I do pray that you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd bind the wicked one. Uh, I pray you'd bind every imp from hell. Uh, and I pray that, Lord, uh, nothing would be allowed to distract or disrupt our service. Uh, and I pray that Jesus would be high and lifted up. Uh, I pray that he'd be glorified. Uh, I pray he'd be magnified and exalted. Uh, for uh, he said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men uh, unto me. And God, I pray uh, folks would fall in love with Jesus as much as Jesus loves them. Uh, 
And I pray you do work in our midst this morning. Uh, I pray for power from on high. Uh, and I pray for Holy Ghost conviction. Uh, I pray for those that may be in attendance this morning uh, that may have a head knowledge of the cross of Christ, uh, but they've never truly been born again. Uh, I pray that the sweet Holy Ghost would convict them of sin uh, and through love draw them uh, to an altar of repentance. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are saved, uh, that are cold and indifferent on God, uh, that, Lord, may have their sights on a far country. Uh, God, I pray today the Holy Ghost of God would convict them, uh, show them the air of their ways. Uh, God, we'd see them, too, uh, find themselves at an altar of repentance. Uh, I pray for that saint of God uh, that may be struggling, uh, that God, uh, you'd come along and pick them up like you bore your cross, uh, and God, you'd help them uh, in the valley where they are. Uh, Father, I pray for that one uh, that is seeking answers. Uh, they'd find them in Christ. Uh, Father, I pray for that one, uh, uh, Lord, that's just here, uh, but Lord, they've never really gotten in. Uh, I pray today they'd get in. Uh, Father, I pray your will would be manifested to every heart, uh, and I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Uh, and I pray again uh, that Jesus would be highly exalted. Uh, Father, bless now. Uh, I'll have your will and way. Uh, help me to say everything you'd have me to say, uh, and nothing comes contrary to the word or will of God. Uh, Father, we'll bless you, praise you, and exalt you for all that you do, for it's in the wonderful, the holy, the loving name, the name that's above every name that we pray, the loving name of Jesus. We ask it all. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want you to notice a few things in these verses. I want you to notice, first of all, the scourging. Uh, in verse number 1, the Bible says, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. Uh, when you just read that, you don't think too much about it. Uh, but when you realize what Jesus did for you and I, uh, 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 it ought to break our hearts. Uh, you see that Jesus came into this world. Uh, uh, he came from the glory world. Uh, 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 in the beginning, was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There was never a time uh, that Jesus, the Son of God, has never existed. Uh, but one day, Miss Marcy, uh, he had looked ahead in time and saw your need of a Savior. Uh, and he stepped out of glory and stepped into the womb of a virgin. Uh, and he was born into this world. Uh, and he lived 30 years uh, just as a normal man. Uh, at the age of 30, he started his earthly ministry. Uh, and friend, uh, throughout those years, uh, he never once uh, uh, broke the commandments of God. Never once uh, was uh, uh, in a position where uh, he even thought about breaking the commandments of God. Uh, even though uh, he became a man, he was still all God, he was holy, uh, even Simeon uh, said that he'd behold the glory of God, uh, can I say something about the Lord Jesus, he was sinless, uh, he was perfect, uh, and even Pilate goes on to say he found no fault uh, in the Lord Jesus, uh, but because of the hardness uh, of the hearts uh, of the religious crowd, uh, uh, they sent him off to be scourged. Uh, can I say uh, uh, today uh, uh, some of the hardest hearted people there are uh, are religious people, uh, people sitting in churches, uh, people that think they know everything, uh, think they're Holy Ghost Junior. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you uh, uh, the religious crowd sent Jesus uh, to the cross. Uh, here we find his scourge. Uh, Brother Donald, that means they uh, uh, strung him up to a whipping post. Uh, and they beat him with a cat of nine tails. Uh, they beat him with so many stripes. Uh, it ripped the flesh off of his body. Uh, uh, the muscles were showing. Uh, the bones were showing. Uh, uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 22, My bones, they stare at me. Uh, they scourged him. Uh, they beat him. Uh, they mocked him. Uh, they derided him. Uh, all because Brother Ray, he loved you, uh, and he wanted to make a way where you could be saved from your sins. Uh, can I say uh, they scourged him? One account says they would beat him, and they got so tired of beating him, Brother Eric, and looking in those eyes of love that they blindfolded him. And they said, prophesy who it is that hit you. Uh, 
Can I say before there ever was time, uh, Jesus knew who it would be that would be buffeting him. Uh, but can I say, uh, as a sheep is brought to her shearer's dumb, uh, he opened not his mouth. Uh, hey, he could have put it into it all. Uh, he's the king of glory. Uh, but yet, uh, he allowed them to beat him uh, that you and I would have to suffer that same fate. Uh, can I say we ought to all be scourged and thrown off into hell today because we were conceived in sin. We're sinners by nature, sinners by practice. Uh, we've failed the grace of God even this week. Uh, but God in His grace and His mercy, uh, He still loves us and made a way where we didn't have to go through what Jesus is going through. Brother Ron, I believe everyone that rejects Jesus and dies and goes to hell is going to suffer everything He suffered on the cross and more. Can I say, he was scourged. If you look on down in verse number 2, you find uh, the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on a head, and they put, a purple, uh, put on him a purple robe uh, and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Uh, they beat him. Uh, they platted his head with a crown of thorns. Uh, I've seen thorns from that part of the world. Uh, uh, they're not like little ones we see on roses, friends. Uh, they're spikes. They're three, four, five inches long. Uh, and the very uh, uh, platting of that crown on his head uh, peeled the flesh from his head. Uh, uh, he's bleeding from his head and his face uh, and his body. Uh, they put a robe on him. Uh, they bowed down and mocked him. Uh, can I say there are a lot of people... Uh, in places called churches today uh, and they're doing things in the name of the Lord and all they're doing is mocking him not worshiping him we see the scourging in verse number 4 we find his sentencing the Bible says in verse 4 Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto him behold I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him uh, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns uh, and the purple robe and Pilate saith unto them behold the man when the chief priests therefore and officers saw him they cried out saying crucify him crucify him Pilate saith unto them take ye him and crucify him for I find no fault in him the very judge knew what to do and he wouldn't do it because he was fearful of the people now can you imagine they bring forth Jesus in that robe with those thorns after they've beaten him. He is a bloody mess. But yet their hatred said that's not enough. And can I say sin will sear your conscience? Sin will make you bitter and angry? Sin will cause you to hate where you once loved? Sin will turn your heart against the very one who created you in the womb. I've seen people sitting in churches, Brother Brian, bitter and angry and hateful, hate the preacher, hate the church, hate everything about it because uh, they're not getting their way. Hmm. You know what upset this crowd, Brother Tommy? Jesus told them the truth because the truth will set you free. And Jesus called Jehovah God Father which that is his father. Can I say the Jews never got to call him father? It was always Jehovah. But you and I that have been born again, saved, uh, adopted into the family of God, we now get to call him father because of what Jesus done. They sentenced him. The Jews cried crucified, but Pilate was wanting to release him. He said, I find no fault in him. I should have went back and counted them, but on several occasions in this passage alone, Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Pilate even went to him privately and tried to say, Did you say you're the king of the Jews? And Jesus didn't answer him a word. Can you imagine Jesus defending Jesus? Nobody would have a leg to stand on. Oh, by the way, he will one day. Heaven and earth is going to be passed away and he's going to ascend to the throne, the great white throne, uh, and the books will be open and he will judge and no one will have any defense before him. We see the scourging, we see the sentencing. In verses 16 through 18 we find the sacrifice. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. 
they took Jesus and led him away. This is very important in John's account because if you read Matthew's account, they actually uh, uh, took Simon the Serene and told him to bear Jesus' cross. But look what John says. And he bearing his cross. Nobody could bear Jesus' cross but Jesus. Hmm? Can I say, even though he was beaten beyond recognition, he was still God and man enough to carry that cross down to Via Della Rosa two miles. And he bearing his cross went forth into the place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. He carried that cross after being beaten. Isaiah says his visage was marred so much more than any man. That means he didn't even resemble a human being. And they got done beating him. He carried that cross and he laid it down and then he laid down on it. They didn't struggle with him. He didn't try to get away. He yielded himself to that cross and they pierced his hands and his feet and they suspended him between heaven and earth. And there he hung naked in an open shame because he loved you. Because he loved me. He became our sacrifice, our propitiation. In Exodus chapter number 12, God told Israel to take a lamb, set it out for 14 days, make sure it was without spot, without blemish, uh, then sacrifice that lamb, put the blood over the lentils and the doorpost. Uh, 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 and when he, the death angel, came down to Egypt, when he saw the blood, uh, he would pass over them. Uh, and uh, the Jews have kept the Passover feast ever since. Uh, now we have Easter at the same time they have Passover. Uh, and it's a reminder uh, that it takes blood, uh, for without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Uh, but can I say unto you, uh, uh, God sent his lamb uh, uh, to take away our sins. Uh, do you see the blood of lambs and rams and goats uh, only push back the sins of the people? Uh, Oh, but they took the perfect Lamb of God, the darling Son of God. And John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Hey, when Jesus forgives us of our sins, He washes us in the blood that He shed on Calvary. And our sins are to be remembered no more. His blood is placed over the door of our heart. And when God looks at us, He don't see our sin. He don't see our fault. He don't see our failures. He don't see what we were. He sees the blood of the Lamb. And he says, forgiven, pardoned, set free, justified. What a blessing that I'm saved by the good grace of God. Can I say, when he was suspended, he was connecting God and man. Can I say, when he shed his blood, he fulfilled all 370 time, times in the Word of God where the blood was shed. Can I say all the modern versions take out the blood of Christ? They don't like the blood. Years ago, the United Methodist Church started taking out the songs out of hymn books that, like uh, uh, about the blood of the Lamb. Uh, they said, we don't want that bloody religion. Uh, I'm one for that bloody religion. Uh, because uh, without his blood, without him being our sacrifice, without his propitiation, there is no hope for me. Uh, Jesus saith unto them in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Can I say he sufficed all of the law's demands? Most people have heard the Ten Commandments. We don't research all 600 and close to 90 laws. But every one of those laws were given to show that man could not be holy. But God demands holiness. Uh, and the only way we could be holy is we have to be washed from our sins and all the law had to be satisfied. Uh, and it was sufficed in Christ. Uh, he took the handwriting and ordinances against us and nailed them to his cross. Uh, all those laws uh, were sufficed in Christ. Amen. We know that thou shalt not commit... Uh, Adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, uh, uh, thou shalt not kill. We know those. 
say, well, I've never killed anybody. I've never committed adultery. Uh, I've never lied, liar, liar. But uh, I've never done those things. I've never buried false witness. But see, Brother Josh, under the law, everybody had to have a fortress on the roof of their house. You got one? Guilty. Hmm. Under the law, you could not enter the temple if you'd been with your wife three days before or three days after service. If we adhered to that law, there would never have been a second generation church. Because we have church on Sunday and Wednesday, we could never be with our wives. Our wives wouldn't mind that. There was a whole lot of laws. You couldn't wear blended fabric. You had to wear all wool, all cotton. Every one of us are guilty in here today. What I'm saying is all those laws were given as our schoolmaster to show us we couldn't be holy. Amen. Amen. Mm. Can I help you with something? You can't take four steps and be holy. Right. Amen. Mm. Uh, you know, the Nazarenes preach it. You ain't going reach sinless perfection. Good luck. Because about the time you think you're there, you've already broken it. Amen. Uh, Jesus took all the law. Now listen, listen real carefully. He didn't do away with the law. There's a lot of that law still in effect. Uh, can I help you with something? You're not to marry your sister. God, God didn't have to repeat that in the New Testament. That's still a law. Uh, there's a lot of law that's still law. But Jesus took that law and he nailed it to his cross because we couldn't keep it. But he did. Can I say when he sacrificed himself, he satisfied the Father. Yes. Amen. Isaiah 53 said when the Lord, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Right. And the Lord uh, was satisfied when he saw uh, uh, that Christ gave his soul for you and I. Can I say this? Jesus Christ satisfied God's will and God's word. Can I say, as children of God, we're to be Christ-like. That's why they call us Christian. Can I say, in order to be a Christian, we have to satisfy God's will and God's word for our life. And let me show you something else. I ain't even got to the message. Let me show you the soldiers. Verse 23. The Bible says, Then the soldiers... When they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top and throughout. They said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which saith, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Uh, we find that these soldiers cast lots for his coat. They gambled to see who would get his coat after they had parted his garments. And when I was reading this, and God put this passage on my heart last night, I outlined a message on the thought of them gambling for his coat. And I had a message on making sport of the things of God. And Miss Annette and I ran an errand. We come back and we'd done some work in the yard. And when I went back to my study last night, the Holy Ghost said, nope. He said, you're missing it. So I want you to look again in verse 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart. I'm going to preach on this thought this morning. I want to preach on the parting of his garments. The parting of his garments. Now can I say that some commentators believe that they just took his clothes and they tore them up and parted them out that way. Most believe uh, that uh, 
they took his garments and separated them. Somebody got his shoes. Somebody got his uh, 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 linen garment. And some got his uh, tunic and that sort of thing. Can I say it is widely known that as a bonus for the soldiers who whenever they did a crucifixion, they got the clothes of whoever they crucified. That was part of their bonus. Now, can I say, there is but garments that only Christ is fit to wear. The parting of his garments was but a picture of how man has attempted to insert himself into the role that only Jesus can ascribe to. This parting of his garments is a picture to us today. We see this playing out even in our society today. Can I say the four parts of his garment represent four things? Can I say the first thing that they parted among themselves is his deity? Only Christ can wear that crown. He is God manifest in the flesh. He came full of grace and truth. Uh, he came from the Father. Uh, he is the Son of God. Uh, he is the Word, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, and all three agree in one. Uh, he is God, my dear friends. He did not become God. Uh, he is God. He's always been God. He's Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, uh, faithful and true. Uh, he is God, my dear friends. Uh, can I say the false versions when the NIV, for example, takes 171 times, takes the blood out of the Bible. It's an attack on the deity of Christ. Can I say uh, the New King James uh, has a, 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 a symbol on it. It's three entwined leaves uh, where KJV in the, an NKJV in the middle. Those three entwined leaves are... Uh, or listen to me, they're a pagan symbol which represents 666. Can I say the, NI, or the uh, New King James uh, had a Catholic priest sitting on the committee uh, and they used uh, uh, the Vaticanus text, which every false version of the Bible comes from the Vaticanus text, uh, which takes out whole parts of the scriptures. Uh, why? They're taken away from the deity of Christ. Can I say the NIV on the council that uh, interpreted that uh, version uh, uh, had homosexuals sitting on the committee? I don't want a Bible that came from a Catholic priest. I don't want a Bible that came from the homosexuals. Uh, can I say our Bible came from the Texas Receptus, the received text uh, that the uh, uh, apostles pinned it down in. Uh, it's been handed down from generation to generation. Uh, God has preserved his word for English-speaking people. Uh, I'm glad I don't have a Bible that contains the word of God. Uh, I have a Bible that is the word of God for English-speaking people. Uh, I don't apologize for it. I just proclaim it. Uh, and I bless the name of the Lord because uh, this Bible tells us uh, that Jesus is God. Uh, that's a garment none of us can wear. Uh, can I say he's the omnipotent one? He has all power. He is almighty. Uh, he's the omniscient one. He is all-knowing. Uh, nothing has ever occurred to him. Uh, he knows the number of the hairs on each one of our heads. Uh, he knows the thoughts and intents of our heart. Uh, he knows our down-sitting, uprising. Uh, he he knows our yesterdays. He knows where we are right now. And he even knows our tomorrows. Uh, he's the omniscient one. He's the omnipotent one. Uh, can I say he's the omnipresent one? Uh, he's everywhere all the time. And I bless his holy name. Uh, he dwells in all of us through the Holy Ghost that are saved. And everywhere you find a believer, you find him. And everywhere you find him, you find hope. The first, deity, the first garment they tried to strip from Jesus is his deity, and they're attacking it today. Mm. Can I say, I've had people tell me you can meditate your way to become a god. Well, can I say, you can sell everything you got, go sit on a hillside, and you can meditate all, di all day long. You're going to die of either coldness or starvation. You're not going to become a god. Can I say this? I've been saved by the good grace of God, men made joint heir to the throne of Christ, but I'm not a God, nor will I ever be. I'm just a son of God. Mm. We find they strive to take away his deity. Can I say another garment? 
is represented in his righteousness. They try to take away the righteousness of Christ. Isaiah 64, 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all of our righteousness are as filthy rags, uh, and we all do fade as a leaf, uh, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Uh, Isaiah 61, 10 says, uh, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Uh, my soul shall be joyful in my God, uh, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Uh, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, uh, as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Uh, Romans 5, 20 says, Moreover, the law entered uh, that the offense might abound, uh, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, uh, that as sin reigned unto death, uh, even so might grace reign through the righteousness uh, unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, listen, uh, when I stand before God, I'll not stand in my own righteousness. Uh, I won't stand in my own merit. Uh, I won't stand in my own abilities. Uh, I won't stand in the deeds and the works I've done. Uh, when I stand before God, uh, I've been robed in His righteousness, uh, donning the garment of salvation. Uh, everything I have and everything I hope to be is in Christ. Jesus. Uh, I'm glad when he sees me, he sees himself. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, and they strive to take away the righteousness of Christ because if they can, uh, we can work our way into heaven. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if we take away his righteousness, we elevate ourselves. John the Baptist said I must decrease and he must increase can I say they try to take away his deity they try to take away his righteousness can I say another part another garment that they try to do away with they try to do away with the fact that he's judge yeah. oh yeah John nine thirty nine says this and Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, they, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. In John 5, 22, the Bible says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Capital S-O-N. Can I say, they don't want him to be judge. Uh, why? Why? Because if he's not the judge, there's no need for the commandments. Uh, no need for the word of God if Jesus isn't going to judge us by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. No need for the commandments. If he's not the judge, there's no conviction of sin. Hmm. We can adopt the philosophy of the world, my right to my claim to myself. We can do as Satan pleads us to do. If it feels good, do it. Just do what you feel. That's okay. That's good enough. Isn't that the philosophy of this woke crowd? Just be who you want to be. Just do what you want to do. There's no consequences. Hmm? You don't like the gender you are? Just claim you're something else. You don't like being a male or a female? Claim you're a cat. You know, it don't matter. But can I say, God made you the way he made you. And you're going to give an account to God because he is the judge. And the Bible says that every one of us will give an account of himself to God. And we're going to give an account to Christ because all judgment's been committed unto him. See, if, there's, if, if he's not judged, there's no commandments. There's no rules. Isn't it amazing? There's not rules for the world, but there are for us. They're allowed to call us anything. We can't call them sodomites. I like what Earl James called them, nasty people. I kind of like that. Because they are nasty. Their attitude's nasty. Their lifestyle's nasty. Huh? It's just nasty. Huh? Just do some crazy things. It's nasty. But see, if there's no judge, there's no commandments, there's no right or wrong, there's no conviction, you know, I did wrong, so I feel bad about it. No, you're allowed to feel bad because you're special. And you can do whatever you want to do. There's no consequences. And can I say, if he's not the judge, there's no need for conversion. You're right. Amen. You can just stay however you want to. 
What can I say? The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The very word conversion means he changes you from what you were to what he wants you to be. I'm glad when he saved me, he changed me. Can I say he changed my desires? You know, used to, I didn't really care about going to church. I just had to go. My grandpa was a preacher, and we went. Uh, there was a lot of songs I didn't like. And he always preached too long. But after I got saved, oh, I couldn't wait to go to church. Couldn't wait to hear them songs. Couldn't wait to hear the preaching. Preach all day. Didn't matter to me. Why? It's saved. There's something happening on the inside of me. Hmm. Uh, let's see if he's not the judge. We become judge. We make the rules. We make the decisions, and we're okay with what we decide. This is a side note. I just read this. You would not believe the suicide rate amongst transgender people. They mutilate their bodies thinking that it, everybody's going to love them. But they find after they do so, they're loved even worse. And many of them commit suicide. And that's sad. And by the way, while I'm here, go back and read 1 Kings 18. Those that were filled with the spirit of the devil, they cut themselves. Mutilation's always been a part of the devil. He always wants you to bring harm to yourself. Jesus Christ wants you to love him. When you love him, you love yourself because he's in you. Uh, that didn't cost you any extra. The last garment that they tried to take away from Christ, they tried to take his glory. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. When you've seen Jesus, you saw the glory of the Father. They're trying to take that glory away. Hebrews 2, 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. 2 Peter 3, 8, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Can I say there were a multitude of other verses talking about his glory. You see, if he has his glory, then he must be worshipped. He must be admired. He must be adhered to. He must reign supreme, and therefore he is above us. But if he doesn't have any glory, we don't have to listen to him. We don't have to worship him. You know why in a lot of false churches they worship everything but him? Because they're trying to take his glory. Hmm? Huh? I think our banner above the pulpit says it all. He is worthy to be praised because he tasted death for us. He left glory, came here and showed us the glory of the Father, died for our sins so we could go to glory and abide in the glory of God forevermore. They sought to part his garments. But see, those were the garments of Christ. And can I say today there's an attack on the very same garments. Even in your heart, the devil will attack you. Well, you don't have to worship the Lord. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do what the Bible says. You don't have to pray. You don't have to be faithful. You don't have to tell somebody else about Jesus. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. That's the devil talking to your heart, trying to take away the very garments of Christ out of your heart and your life. He's been attacking Christ since the beginning. And he's still doing it. And he does it in people's hearts. You may be here and you might be lost. You may have never realized what Jesus did for you on Calvary. He did that for you, friend. He died and suffered that death and was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures proven that he was God. And he did it so you could have eternal life. It allowed you to be here and hear this message so you could realize you need him. Because if you don't trust in him, you're just as guilty as those soldiers taking away his glory, taking away his deity, taking away his righteousness, 
taking away the fact that he is the judge, the righteous judge. You become judge in your own life. But can I say we're all going to give an account to him? Do you know him today? Child of God, you're not going to go to the great white throne judgment. You're going to the judgment seat of Christ. You know, you're going to give an account for your attitude when you come to the house of God, for your adoration for Christ when you come to the house of God, for your attendance, uh, for your giving, for every aspect that this Bible teaches, you're going to give an account. He's still judge. He's supposed to be the Lord of your life. He is to be worshipped with your walk and your words. Let me ask you something. Is he pleased with you today? Or are you trying to take his garments away? Are you trying to be the Lord of your life and not him? See, you've been bought with a price. Your life is no longer your own. I can't quit. I'm trying. Brother Josh, you know what that means? <laughs> that your life is no longer your own. Yeah. It's kind of like when you married Brittany. You no longer have a say. She, she's going to tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can say, man, it's all right. We know it's the truth. <laughs> You've been henpecked all, ever since I've known you. <laughs> Coming to the Lord's not henpecked. What happens is he took away all of our sin, all of our shame, robes us in his righteousness, makes us clean before God. Then he's given us everything he has, made us a joint heir to his throne, and we get to go dwell in glory, New Jerusalem, with him forevermore. And he says, that's what I'll do for you. But you've got to give me you. Your life's no longer yours. So where I tell you to go, go. What I tell you to do, do. I'm doing everything well. I'm not doing anything to hurt you or shame you. I'm doing everything that I can get glory in your life so I can show the world, here's somebody that don't deserve to go to heaven, but they're going to heaven, and look what I've done in their life. Good. Pretty good trait. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Huh? Yeah. But Xander, when you sit there and you say, well, I'm not going to go to the altar, and the Holy Spirit's saying, you need to go to the altar. You've been mean to your sisters this week. You need to get right with them. You need to get right with the Lord. I know you don't like to do that. I don't like to do that. That's why God didn't give me two sisters, because I'd have never got right with them. huh? Well, I don't know if there's anything going on between you. I'm just preaching, okay? What can I say? And God speaks to your heart, and you say, I'm not going to the altar. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, before all these people, I'm not going to do what's right. You're telling the Lord, you're the deity. You're the judge. You know what's best. He's no longer Lord. And see, the people do that every church service. God speaks to their heart, and they grieve the Holy Spirit, Brother Ron, in their heart. And they say, no, I'm not going to do that. And they wonder why they don't have any joy. They wonder why they don't have any peace. wonder why they don't have any victory, because you've not let the Lord be the Lord. You've taken his garments, and they're only he and don those garments. It's a good day in your life when you let him be who he is and you become who you're supposed to be. What a great day. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can be saved today. We're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can leave out here knowing your sins have been washed away, you're a citizen of heaven, and that uh, one of these days you'll spend eternity with the Lord. You don't have to worry about hell. You don't have to worry about uh, 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 paying for your sin. He'll pay for it. You're here today and you're saved. Let me ask you, are you trying to take his garments? Or are you letting him truly be the Lord? Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.